What's up, everybody? Go Burns giving you my review of Grand Theft Auto Online Gun Running, now available in Grand Theft Auto Online. And as usual, when it comes to my reviews, we're going to go over the pros, the cons, and of course, my verdict regarding the latest update. And you are welcome to chime in below in the comment section with your views, your opinions, your pros, your cons, and your verdict regarding gun running. Without further ado, let's get started with the pros, as usual. First off, it is the biggest update in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2017. We had the special vehicle circuit a few months ago, but it really was small by comparison. All it really did was add maybe a few new vehicles and uh, some new tracks for the special vehicles. Well, not all the special vehicles, but that's beside the point. This is the first real massive major update in 2017. We got a lot of stuff courtesy of gun running, including new ways to make money in the game. And what's really cool is that you can either be a CEO, a VIP, or an MC president to partake in everything that gun running has to offer. Now, what is the thing that you get to make money doing? Well, there's actually a couple things. First off, the arms trade, which actually makes really good money. If you really grind at it, you really dedicate yourself to it, you can make some sweet cash doing arms in gun running along with the uh, supplies for research, doing deliveries, as well as the mobile operations, which are kind of like, uh, I would say, mini heists slash missions. They are a lot of fun. We'll talk more about that in a moment, though. Then, of course, we got some major features that have been added courtesy of gun running, like the bunkers. About a dozen bunkers scattered throughout Blaine County, out of nowhere, magically. You know, one day they weren't there, the next day they're all over the place. <laughs> Video games, right? So you have the ability to purchase a bunker now to do these arms trades and researching for uh, upgrading your weaponry and whatnot. And you can also store the MOC in the bunker as well. Now the MOC is a really cool, massive, giant, big rig with a trailer on it that you can put a weaponized you know, workshop uh, for vehicles and your Mark II weapons as well. We'll talk more about that in a minute. There's also new vehicles. I may have mentioned that a moment ago. New weaponized vehicles. What I really like about these vehicles is you can customize them and upgrade them and you can store them in your garage. So we got the APC tank, we have the half track, we have the oppressor rocket bike, as well as the weaponized Tampa, the Dune FAV, as well as the AA trailer. More on that in a little bit. Now, we didn't get any new weapons per se, but we do have six Mark II weapons. The pistol, assault rifle, carbine rifle, an SMG, uh, the combat machine gun, and a heavy sniper, all of which you can take into the MOC, into the uh, weapon shop, if you have the weapons workshop inside your MOC, and you can upgrade them. And there's a variety of customization, like uh, different like skins, colors, tints, uh, some other bells and whistles you can add as well and research too. We'll talk more about research in a few, but it's really awesome that we have this ability in Grand Theft Auto Online. It's something a lot of the fans have been wanting for quite some time now. The ability to further customize our weapons, and now we can do so with the six Mark II weapons. Now you can't have a major update without new threads. New clothing, tats, hairstyles, masks, all that in gun running. Definitely a pro in my opinion. The Bunker Series Adversary Modes, another pro, and this is kind of a greatest hits adversary mode. They are set in the bunker, but each one's different, and they're based off previous adversary modes. There's one for Slasher, there's one for Every Bullet Counts, I believe, etc, etc. And a lot of people out there love adversary modes, take it or leave it. Some of them are better than others, but it's cool to have something additionally to do in the game, courtesy of the Bunker Series Adversary Modes now in Grand Theft Auto Online. The next pro is the return of an old friend, Agent 14 from Grand Theft Auto Online Heist. Now, I don't know what it is about this guy. I mean, he's a smarmy, he's a wisecracking, smartass agent, and we just fell in love with the guy in Grand Theft Auto Online Heist. In fact, he is considered to be one of the most popular characters in Grand Theft Auto Online, way more popular than Malk, to be honest. And he's back. He's our tour guide. He's our go-to guy. He's the one who basically lets us know exactly what gun running is all about with this update. He is there front and center from the very beginning. And it's just cool to have Agent 14 given a little bit more of an appearance in gun running than we got in Grand Theft Auto Online Heist. I, for one, am happy to see the return of Agent 14. Another pro, regards VIP. This is for people that can't necessarily afford to be a CEO or be a MC president. They go with the third option, VIP. Now, originally, 
when you were a VIP, you had to have at least a million dollars in your Maze bank account in order to be a VIP. Then I think Rockstar lowered it down to 500,000. Now it's been lowered to $50,000. So that's all you need in your Maze bank account in order to be a VIP. And once you're a VIP, our CEO, our MC president, that's when you can purchase the bunker as well as the M. Oh, see. And the final set of pros is the usual various bugs, fixes, patches that come with all these updates, hopefully improving the performance and gameplay in Grand Theft Auto Online. So those are all my pros, which means it is time now to move on over to the cons. The big con is pretty obvious. This is the most expensive update ever in Grand Theft Auto Online. And that's saying something because we've had a lot of doozies when it comes to the uh, price tag of these so-called free updates. This one is, I would say, at the very top of that list. It's very, very expensive. Case in point, the bunker. The cheapest bunker is, I think, up in Polito Bay. Well, near Polito Bay for like, what, $1.1 million? That's just the base model. That's without any upgrades, any bells or whistles. 1.1 million dollars then there's the moc which at base cost is 1.2 million dollars once again without any upgrades but you obviously are going to need the weapons and vehicle workshop at the very least which is just under a million dollars so you add those price tags together the bunker even the cheapest one at 1.1 million along with the moc which is roughly uh, i would say about two million dollars yeah, it starts to get rather pricey whenever you add all that together. Three to four million dollars easily spent on the bunker and the MOC combined. And, you know, that probably would go up depending on which upgrades you end up getting for both the bunker and the MOC. And that's just for starters because everything else just adds up. It really is nickel and dimed when it comes to this update. Now, here's another issue that is a con. The fact that, once again, the associates, bodyguards, the MC members get screwed. The standard pay is still as low as it ever was, even though a lot of us have been asking Rockstar to bump up that pay as an extra incentive for people to become, you know, associates, bodyguards, members of one's MC. Because you're not getting really paid that much to be, you know, one of those three. And if you got a little bit more in your pocket, you'd be more inclined to continue helping out an MC president or a VIP or a CEO with uh, whatever it is that they're up to. Now, another way that they get shafted is they don't have access to the boss's MOC. Now, this is something I find very, very disappointing because you can purchase these weaponized vehicles without a bunker and without an MOC. But without the MOC, you cannot customize these vehicles. But in order to get the MLC, you have to have a bunker, which as I mentioned a moment ago, that can be up there at the very lowest three to four million dollars right off the bat. So at the very least for everyone that can't afford the bunker or the MLC, I assumed that we would be able to, you know, join a CEO or join a VIP or join an MC president that can't afford those things. And while you're working for him or her, you would also have access to their MOC. Unfortunately, you do not. You can't take your weaponized vehicles or your weapons into the MOC to be transformed into Mark II versions. And to be honest, I think that it would have been really cool if we would have had that ability to allow our associates, bodyguards, and MC members to use our MOC, you know, since it's something that could be used theoretically by players other than ourselves, as long as you are part of our organization or our crew, et cetera, et cetera. So it would have been really cool. Instead of having to purchase the bunker and the MOC, you could simply use the person who you're working for. You go in there with your weaponized vehicle, upgrade it, fix it, tweak it. And then if you want to get the Mark II weapons, you could do that as well. If the CEO, VIP, or MC president happens to have those workshops in their MOC. I feel like it's a missed opportunity by Rockstar, and unfortunately, it looks really bad because it just you know, says that you're going to have to shell out even more money in order to be able to upgrade these vehicles and get the Mark II versions of those weapons. And you know, for the price tag for each of those things I just mentioned, it just keeps going up and up. The third con revolved around associates, bodyguards, and biker members is this. They can help you with the mobile operations. In fact, you need their help in order to complete these mobile operations. But 
they do not get to receive the vehicle discount. On top of the fact that the payouts for these mobile operations, which are really fun, they are a lot of fun, the payout sucks. And you think it would be an extra incentive along with the payout that by doing the doom buggy one and doing uh, all the other ones that that would, you know, allow them to also get the benefit of the discount on all these vehicles. So then they can go and purchase the APC, the half track, as well as the weaponized Tampa for a much lower price, you know, as a, you know, an additional incentive for helping you with the mobile operations. But alas, that is not the case, which is why it's another con in my opinion. Now we're going to talk about uh, one of my least favorite vehicles that came with this update. It's not really a vehicle, though. The AA trailer. Now, what's interesting about the AA trailer is it, along with the MOC, is parked in your bunker. And you can sell the other weaponized vehicles, which is definitely a pro I should have mentioned. It is a pro that you can sell all the other weaponized vehicles like the APC, the Hattrack, Weaponized Tampa, Oppressor Rocket Bike as well as the Dune FAV, but you cannot sell the AA trailer. And what's even weirder is that it comes with a Saddler, right? But you can't do anything to the Saddler. You can't upgrade it either. You can't customize the Saddler. You know, you can have whatever Saddler you want with the AA trailer as long as it's brown. <laughs> That's it. And it's deceptive because if you guys remember, in the gun running trailer, it shows the AA trailer being hauled in that trailer, I know trailer, trailer, by what we now know to be the Night Shark, which looks like a military style Humvee type vehicle. And that is actually going to be one of the vehicles that's currently locked in gun running that will be eventually dripped out in the next few weeks. And I honestly don't know if we're going to be able to use the uh, Night Shark. I guess you call up the the AA trailer, then you can detach the Saddler, and then you can hook the Night Shark up to it if you purchase the Night Shark, but then there's more money coming out of your pocket when it comes to the uh, vehicles that have yet to come to the game that are currently locked. So yeah, I really wish we could sell the AA trailer. And my advice is pick one, either go with the uh, Half Track, which is an AA vehicle, you know, anti-aircraft, or go with the AA trailer. The one you know, good thing about the uh, half track is that if you don't like it, you can sell it, just like with the other vehicles, with the exception of the AA trailer, for whatever rhyme or reason. The next con revolves around research, and this is something Remy also brought up yesterday in the comments section in a previous video, and I wholeheartedly agree. I have been trying to upgrade you know, the, the tech to get these items on some of my vehicles or weapons or the various uh, camo skins. So there's a nice list of cons I have revolved around research. First off, the new upgrades take forever to, to make it happen. So you steal or buy supplies. Those are your first two options. If you don't want to go steal, you can purchase these supplies for $75,000. That's not that much money in the game, but it does add up. Now, in order to boost up the research process, you can do two things. You can do the staff upgrade, which adds more staff to the bunker. That is $600,000. Then there's the equipment upgrade, which is $1.1 million. Now, in all fairness, if you select the staff to, instead of doing research to do manufacturing, uh, the equipment also you know, makes the research and the, fa the manufacturing both go faster, I guess. But even if you have all your staff you know, focused on research along with uh, the equipment upgrade, it's still going to take a long time in order to get the next research project done. And you have to actually be in the lobby during this process. You can't you know, go off and play a mission or a heist or do a race, a death match. You can't go play another video game. It's not being done in real time. There's only progression when it comes to the research as well as the stock in the bunker whenever you are physically in a lobby, whether it's a, a public lobby or a private lobby or an invite lobby. We'll talk more about the lobby con in a moment because that's definitely a con in my opinion. So you have to actually be there physically in the lobby in order for there to be any progress when it comes to the uh, research. But good news, you can actually speed up research through Fast Track. And Fast Track can range depending on how much research has yet to be done. Now, the starting amount for research, if you've just begun a research on a new um, 
research project is $225,000. And there's a lot of um, locked research items that need to be researched. So if you decided you didn't want to wait, you could theoretically unlock all of it within probably a matter of minutes, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. You know, $75,000 a pop for supplies, $225,000 a pop for fast track, which is $300,000 a pop for each research item. Plus, you cannot pick which thing you want to research. It does it for you. So if you look at that list and you're saying, well, you know what? I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need that either. Too bad. Those are the things that are going to get researched. This team that you hire to work for you in your bunker are going to research whatever the hell they want to research. The option should be up to us to decide and dictate what gets researched and what doesn't get researched. That way, at the very least, I can get the upgrades for the weapons I want. I can get the upgrades for the vehicles I want. I can get the different livery skins that I want without having to wait on the uh, research team to get around to doing it whenever, you know, whenever it's on their list at the beginning, the middle, or the very end. And that is definitely an issue that Remy and I have, as long, along with others, regarding research. And of course, finally, after you do all that, all that you go through, you still have to buy the upgrades once it's researched. That's right. The upgrades are not free. So you have to go, once you have it researched, and put that upgrade on your vehicle or put that upgrade on your weapon and still going to cost money out of your pocket. The final con is the lobbies. Once again, the same issue that we've had for quite some time now when it comes to a lot of these things, the CEO work, the MC president work, and now, well, and of course, six months ago with uh, the uh, import export. And now with uh, gun running is in order to do a lot of this stuff, you have to be in a public lobby. No ifs, ands, or buts. You have no choice but to do this stuff in a public lobby. You cannot access the laptop and do the researching and go pick up supplies and do drop-offs unless you are in a public lobby. And that's always a crapshoot because sometimes you're lucky to get into a small public lobby. And sometimes you're lucky to get into a public lobby where nobody's messing with anybody. But then there's always the lobbies full of griefers in their hydras, in their savages, in their buzzards, ready to blow anyone to bits, especially you when you're trying desperately to pick up them supplies or make a delivery after working really hard to you know, get you know, stock in your bunker. So I don't know why Rockstar has it to where we have to be in a public lobby for these things, but it is what it is. And to be honest, it sucks. I wish Rockstar would change this policy, but you know, you know, if wishes were horses, as they say. So there's the pros and the cons. Which means it's time now for the verdict. Grand Theft Auto Online gun running offers a ton of fun and new content to Grand Theft Auto Online, which has been desperately needed for several months. But it also comes with a hefty price tag. For example, I came in with $26 million. I easily spent $20 million and I didn't even buy everything or upgrade everything either. So very pricey, extremely expensive update regarding gun running. And as I mentioned, the associates, bodyguards, club members who can't afford their own bunkers or MOCs lack any real incentive to help a CEO, VIP, or MC president. But it is a huge, awesome update to Grand Theft Auto Online. The major downside is it's expensive as hell, and there's definitely a lot of nickel and diming going on. And I'm afraid this is going to be the future for Rockstar Games, you know, be it Grand Theft Auto Online, Red Dead Redemption 2, just like Strauss Zelnick talked about in an interview. By the way, Strauss Zelnick is the CEO of Take-Two Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar. And he talked about how basically uh, they need to find new ways to further monetize their games. And uh, this is a pretty good case in point of Rockstar further monetizing their quote-unquote free updates. Anyways, that is my review of Grand Theft Auto Online Gunrunning. I'm having a blast playing it, and there's a lot to do in it, but at the same time, like I said, it's just so freaking expensive, and for people that can't afford a lot of this stuff, like the bunkers or MOCs, it really makes them feel like they're being left out, unfortunately. Let me know below in the comment section what is your views, your opinions, your pros, your cons, your review of Grand Theft Auto Online Gunrunning.